Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today in Kreuzlingen, Switzerland at the Kessler Auction House, and I'm taking a look at a Swiss purchased French light machine gun here. This is a Chatellerot Model M31, uh, often known as a Rybel machine gun. And this is basically the vehicle and fortress modified version of the Chatellerot Model 1924-29. It was a very early light machine gun, it was one of the first small arms developments that France made after the end of World War I, and it was really a fairly successful light machine gun. Not quite as refined as some of the other guns that would come later, but it was a very serviceable gun. And seeing that it was working well as a light machine gun, the French military decided to come up with an adapted version of it for use in tanks and the Maginot Line, primarily. So this is a single barrel gun. Uh, they did have a lot of mounts of these in doubles, so you will find these guns that uh, feeding from both the left and the right side, depending on the model. Uh, in the double mounts you'd have one of each, so that you could access the magazines on them. Now the reason I say this is a Swiss version is because after World War II the Swiss bought a number of these guns to equip in light armoured vehicles. So uh, this one is actually rather distinctively marked with a Swiss cross on both the magazine and the gun, well, that's on this side where you can't see it yet. That was done because the guns were converted from the French 7.5 by 54 to the Swiss 7.5 by 55 millimeter cartridge. Mechanically, this is actually a pretty simple light machine gun, gas operated, uh, a tilting bolt that functions very much like the Chatellerot. Uh, I don't believe the parts are actually interchangeable, but they're mechanically the exact same idea. Um, it has this very distinctive, odd, forward curving pistol grip, which is actually not that bad when you take into account how this is actually supposed to be used in a fortified uh, mounting emplacement. That's why there's no buttstock on it, is this is either going to be mounted in a, a gun turret in a tank or a mount in a fortress, so you don't need a stock to control recoil. You'll notice there are no sights on this one, that is because this would have, again, had sights built into its fortress or vehicle mount. Now this is sitting on a tripod, this is a Waffenfabrik Burn manufactured ground tripod for the gun, uh, and I presume it has a way to mount sights, although to be perfectly honest I'm not sure exactly what that method is, so we will assume they had some way to do it. Uh, we'll do that in a future video, how about that? Uh, you will sometimes see these with a silver curved butt plate sort of thing, which was sometimes used by the French. Uh, we do have an, a charging handle extension here so that you can charge the gun from directly behind it. Anyway, uh, why don't we go ahead and pull the internals out, and you can see just how simple it really is. So first off, um, here are the Swiss markings that I had been mentioning. They put a big cross, uh, Swiss cross, on the parts so that you don't mix them up. Um, I also didn't mention the magazine. These things use 150 round drum magazines. There's a special loading tool for these things. Um, actually, if I leave it on here... You can see that the whole body of the magazine rotates as it fires. So looking at this uh, from a little bit in front, this is our feeding port. The ejection port is in here. Uh, this has a couple of mounting brackets on it for a brass catching bag if you're in the field, or if you're in a fortress mount, well, field or in a vehicle. In a fortress mount this would probably connect to a flexible tube that would dispose of the brass outside of your fighting position. Charging handle is back here opens the bolt like so. This is a, an open bolt firing weapon, so pull the trigger and it's going to close like so. Now disassembly is going to start at the back. This knurled plug, push it in and rotate it 90 degrees, and that allows me to pull out the recoil spring. Then I can take this lever, which is actually a screw, this is very similar to the Chatellerot. We unscrew that, and then this pivots up and off. This big lug locks into the top of the receiver, and then this holds it in place. And now I can pull all the internals out with the charging handle. There we go. Bolt and Op rod. Looking at the bolt mechanism you can clearly see the similarity to the Chatellerot. This is a tilting bolt design, 
So when it's all the way in battery, being pushed forward by the recoil spring here, these two links force the rear of the bolt to cam upwards, where this slightly shiny surface acts as the locking shoulder, locking into a recess in the re uh, rear of the receiver, blocking the action. So when it uh, fires, the gas piston comes backward, those two connecting links force the bolt to drop, and then the whole thing can cycle. Now we can take the bolt out easily enough by removing the pin right there. Then I can take the bolt out. A couple more features here. The firing pin is actually held physically in place by the operating rod, which means that the firing pin only protrudes when the bolt has travelled backwards far enough to have locked. So that's a nice safety system there. We can just drop the firing pin out the back of the bolt. We have a cutout right here for an ejector, which is actually in the top surface of the gun, and then the bolt feeds uh, from the side, because of course that giant 150 round drum is sitting on the side. And that's what this spring-loaded piece is, that lifts up to engage the base of a cartridge and push it out of the magazine. Now what's cool here is you'll see that they have those cuts on both sides of the bolt, and there's just a pin holding this in place right here. So if you, this bolt is interchangeable for left or right-handed feed guns, all you have to do is take this pin out and move this uh, feed block over to the other side if you have a gun that feeds from the left. Pretty clever little uh, setup there. Other than that, the bolt is symmetrical. I can also pull the fire control mechanism and grip uh, out of the bottom of the receiver, but there's really very little going on here. This is a fully automatic only gun, there's no semi-auto mechanism, so it's just uh, a sear right there. When you pull the trigger, sear drops, the sear locks against this surface, right like that. There we go, when I pull the trigger, bolt can go forward. When you release the trigger, bolt catches on the sear, or the bolt carrier catches on the sear right there. One downside to the gun was that it didn't have a quick change barrel mechanism of any sort. They made up for that as much as possible by giving it a very heavy barrel, um, but still there were fairly strict firing guidelines as to how many, how, how fast and uh, for what duration you would fire. In fact, often with the, the double gun setups, the reason for having two guns there was that you would fire uh, only one at a time, except in case of, you know, danger of being overrun. And while firing one gun, you could let the other gun cool down. There are basically no markings on this, aside from the giant Swiss cross on the ejection port, and this marking right here on the rear right side of the gun, model 1931E, and a serial number. Uh, slight correction, actually. Um, as I have learned after finishing filming that bit that you're watching right now, uh, the tripod here is actually an LMG25 tripod made by WF Byrne. That was the standard Swiss light machine gun. This assembly right here is actually a custom made, well not custom made, it is a mounting bracket to put the M31 onto the LMG25 tripod. It's set up without any sights because it was used exclusively for gunsmiths to test fire these, these machine guns when they were not in the AMX tanks that the Swiss bought them for. So that's why there are no sights uh, onto, on this. The, the thing actually mounts in one of the sight mounting bracket holes. But uh, for just function checking they didn't need sights. So they just came up with this bracket, put them in a standard tripod, and that's easier than trying to test fire them in a tank all the time. Well thank you for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, very cool of the Kessler Auction House to let me drag this thing out in front of the camera and take a closer look at it, and show it to you guys. Uh, the, the 1931 Rybell machine guns are pretty rare to find these days, so I didn't want to miss this opportunity to get a look at this one. Thanks for watching.